Okay, let's look at a few more uh, vector properties here. Uh, we've been working with this rectangle, and uh, let's just take that out for a second. Uh, underneath that, sh where those shape tools were, you'll see ellipse tool, polygon tool. One thing about these primary tools here, um, when you're drawing, if you, for instance, I picked up the ellipse tool, if I want a, a circle, then I'm going to hold down the shift key as I drag, and it constrains it to a circle. Okay, same thing if I have the rectangle tool, if I just click and drag, uh, I can make rectangles of any shape, but if I want a square, I want to hold down the shift key and click and drag, and it drags out a square. Okay, so a little keyboard trick there to help um, to help get these the same size. Now there are a bunch of other tools underneath there, pre-made uh, shapes. So for instance, if I wanted an arrow, instead of me spending a lot of time creating one, I can pick up that arrow tool, and you can see the property bar has all the same properties, but now when I drag out an arrow, I get this shape, and it has all these little yellow handles on it. So as I put my mouse over each yellow handle, it tells me what that handle does. So say this one up here on the front, it controls the arrow tip, so if I, I can click and drag that, if I want that arrow to be longer, or I want the tip to be shorter. So each one of these little handles controls basically one attribute of this shape. I can change the arrow shape, I can grab, extend that, and it's just a regular vector object with just some extra stuff built into it. So I can still use all um, these things on the property bar. So if I wanted a drop shadow here, I could click drop shadow, and uh, now I've got a drop shadow on it. Or if I wanted this to be beveled, uh, I can put a bevel on it. Okay, so lots of options there uh, for doing these shapes, um, these additional shapes. So instead of me trying to create one of these, um, I can just pick up the tool. All right. Okay, so let me just take this guy off. Uh, a couple of things with these objects. Let's say that you wanted to make sort of a keyhole shape. Um, you know, I could draw that out and draw a circle out uh, for the bottom of this. Let's see. And then if I move it on, so I'm, I've got kind of a keyhole shape there. The only trouble is they're separate pieces still. So if I wanted to add a drop shadow on, the drop shadow would do sort of funny stuff. So if I've got two objects in Fireworks, or more objects, um, if I select both of them, then uh, under the Modify menu, I can come down to Combine and do a union, and it'll hook those two together. So now it will act as if I drew those. So if I did want to put a shadow or any special effects, or I wanted to change the fill or the stroke. It's all one object now, just as if I had drawn it. Okay, so I can create a union of more than one shape. Um, I can also use that same idea. Uh, let's say that I have a rectangle here and an ellipse, and I would like the end of my rectangle to be um, uh, concave here on the end. Now there's some tools over here that I could manually do that but I can use this other shape to just punch it out or use it like a cookie cutter. So I'm going to put it over the top there, and the shape on the top kind of becomes the, the cookie cutter. So when I select both of these, um, uh, when I select both of these, then the one on top will act like a cookie cutter to cut through. Okay, so if I do modify, and combine paths and punch that one on the top disappears but it acts as a cookie cutter when it went through okay so now I have a completely different shape that would have been kind of a hassle to draw but using under using those combined sh sh paths options there and I just did union and punch you can play around with the, the crop and the intersect they do kind of different things um, but union and punch seem to be the most uh, the most handy to use Okay, um, just quick some of these other tools here. Uh, I've got a straight line tool, and so as I draw that straight line, if I want it to constrain it to make sure it's vertical or horizontal, if I hold down my shift key and click and drag, um, it constrains it. Okay, to a vertical line, a 45 degree line, I 
I'm sorry, a horizontal, and there's the vertical. And when I let go of the mouse, now I've got that line drawn. And I can use, I can move it around. I've got a vertical line, and it has all the properties down here of a regular vector object, um, except no fill, of course. Okay, so that's the line tool. Uh, and just quick, let's talk about the text tool because it, it's in the same category. So if you want to start, if you want to write some text on your design, when I pick up the text tool, uh, you can see I've got this little cross, uh, this little text beam that comes up. Now if I click, it starts a text box, and now I can write my text in. Okay. Once I have the text down, I really want to go back and get that black selection tool because then I can grab onto the whole text box, move it around, and if you look, the, the property bar looks quite a bit different than the regular vector property bar because it sort of has all this extra text stuff um, jammed in here. So if I want to change the font, uh, I'm just going to open up this and there's all the fonts on your computer are available and as you roll over these, it previews your font or the words that you typed out in that uh, in that font, in that style. So if I then if I select it, it then changes my um, my words into that font. Uh, now, th since this is a vector object, it still has the fill properties and the stroke properties. Uh, they're just in a little different place. So if you look across the top here, there are more options here for for changing the font. There's the size, the pixel size, and right after that is a, uh, another little color picker. That that is the fill color. So I can pick the fill right there, um, and you remember when we just had a rectangle out, the fill color, the fill options. There were a lot more options there with uh, gradients and patterns and um, bevel, not bevels, but textures, and they're still available here. They're just once you open up that palette, there's another button there that says fill options, and here's where all those other um, options come in that I can can add in. So if I want gradients, you can see that gradient went in. Um, same kind of thing happening uh, as if just a plain shape. Same thing with the stroke. There's the, the pencil. If you just look for that pencil, uh, I can put a stroke on and that, that's going to put a border around each letter. And if I want to see more options, you can see there's a stroke options button inside that palette that opens up the same, all the same properties as uh, on the other, for ve other vector objects. Okay. So there's a little bit of text, um, and then special effects over here as well. So opacity and all the filters are available. So if you did need a drop shadow there, easy to put on. So exact same properties as all the other um, vector objects.